Did you know you can use shadows in an image to find the location of where that photo was taken? In this session we're going to look at this image and by using both the features in the background as well as the shadows of the aircraft that we see in here, we're going to identify the exact location of where this photo was taken. Let's take a look. Hi everyone and welcome back to Let's Geolocate. I'm Ben and this is round four. So settle in and get your maps ready and let's get started. First up, we're going to answer some relevant questions about this image. You can see this is a tweet or a link on X and I'm actually going to link to that in the description below so that you can follow along with this video step by step. First of all, you can see that there's an account posting this. It's in Arabic and we have a date and time as to when it was posted. The first thing I'm gonna do is translate this post and it gives a little bit of context as to what might the image be about and maybe even a bit of geographical information. For me, when I look at these images, I always like to get other sources of where this image might be on the internet to try and find extra information. We can easily do that by clicking on the image, right click and search in Google with the image. When I run a Google Image of Earth search, you can see that there's a number of pages that have used this image or the exact same image before. And some of these articles might have information that might help me at least get a rough understanding of the location of where this photo was taken or a idea of a location or geographical information as to where the event took place as well. So I can go through some of these articles and you'll notice that there might be extra information. In this one, we have the exact same picture, a bit larger, but we also have another picture of what appears to be the same UAV system and a very similar looking location with those mountains in the background, but even a different person and a slightly different angle as well. You can see with the rocks right there and some of the power lines in the background and even some of the tire markings on the road. And this photo appears to be far more accurate, so we can see even more clearly the etchings in the sides of the mountains um, and, and some of the markings on the road and some of those bushes as well. This could really help when we come to combing through satellite imagery for geolocation purposes. I'm also going to translate the article because I can't read Arabic, so I'm going to use my Google Translate plugin that I have here and this will help us get a little bit more information about potentially what happened and where it happened. Obviously, if I was going to rely on this information, I'd get a local speaker to uh, help me with this. But given the machine translation appears to have a few results mentioning a place called Marib, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but there seems to be a few results of those. So I'm actually going to have a look for that in Google Maps. And it looks like that might be in Yemen as well. So I'm going to head to Google Maps and look for that. Cool, so we've got a pretty big area, but don't forget we have a mountain range. And what we can see is that this photo appears to be showing the mountain range on the left of what the of where the UAV is. And don't forget we've got these power lines as well, and these are pretty big. And if we combed around on satellite image for a fair bit around this region, we might even find those and then match a power line uh, a mountain on the left of those power lines as well. But I'm going to take this a bit easier because I think it might be in this region. I could go through all of this mountain range to see if it fits. But first of all, I'm going to start with my angle of how I should be looking at these mountains. And there's a really cool way that you can do that by thinking about the shadows. So we have shadows on the fighters which are more prominent than what we have on the UAV on the ground, the shadows appear to be pushing in this direction towards the mountains. In this one, again, same thing. They don't appear to be going this way. They appear to be going almost towards the mountains. So what I'm going to use is an application called SunCalc. Again, all of this will be linked in the description below so you can easily follow it. For SunCalc, I'm going to type in my location name that I looked for before, which is Marib in Yemen. Okay, so that's the same location that we have on Google Maps there. I'm going to stay quite zoomed out over the area Marib. Um, I'm going to go back to when roughly this might have occurred. It appears to be in May 2021. 
Again, that's not completely reliable information, but that, that's only for the purpose of identifying the shadows. I've selected May 5 as a date. Of course, that's not the exact date, and that would be lucky if it was. However, I've selected that date just for the purpose of looking at the shadows. I'm also going to increase my shadow uh, or my object height just so I can get very big obvious shadows because all I really want to know is the direction that it would have been pointing. I have to zoom in a bit more so I'll make that a much bigger. Great, so this is what my shadow would have looked like uh, in the evening and this is what it lo would have looked like in the morning. So if we think about this, what I have here is a mountain range here and I have shadows going towards that mountain range almost. Same as down here as well. They appear to be going to kind of the, the left top of the image up there. And same, but a bit more further up there. So I want a shadow. If I'm looking at these mountain ranges, mm, I wonder if it could be this one. Well, it could be there because we have shadows pointing towards that direction quite early in the morning. I wonder if we have any other locations. So we have this area over here. Uh, does this look like it could have been it? No, not really. There's no time that the shadows would have been pointing towards the top of that mountain range. This really helps me get an indication as to what mountains uh, I should be focusing on as well. If I go over here, I can see that there's um, a fair few shadows from between 6 to 10 and same as this one over here. Uh, there's a fairly heavy window of time as to when shadows could have been pointing towards the mountains over there. I might try this one over here or I might try actually both of them just to see which ones fit the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to safely collect the images. Um, I don't want to take them just in case there's any extra file information. So I'm just going to make screenshots of these images for now. Just so that I can zoom in, I can manipulate the images and I can even draw some funky lines and colors and boxes on them should I need to. Because this image appears to be so much more detailed than this original image, I'm actually going to use this one as reference and then we'll have the location of this one at the end. So I'm going to use this image now that I've made a screenshot of that and match up the mountains to see if they match any of the mountains that we have around that Marib area. So I'm going to go Marib in Yemen. Okay, so it's a pretty big area, but there's two main mountain regions, or even three if we wanted to include this one. But I think because of sun calc, we've kind of ruled out that. So we have two main mountain regions. We have this one over here, and we have this one over here. With Google Earth, don't forget, the mountains are pretty good. So you have terrain switched on, on the bottom left of Google Earth, which you can see down here. And it allows me to view mountain ranges in 3D. Of course, not all of these are perfect and not all of these are completely accurate. And you can even see some of the jags and crevices where the 3D meshing just hasn't been fully applied there. But at least we get a rough idea of how they look, the bridge lines and how the mountains are shaped. So let's start with this mountain range, which I have a sneak feeling it might not be this one just because it's not as tall and prominent as what we see over here. And there appears to be some forward facing chunks as well as some in the background. For this one, I don't really see that too well over here. And also I don't see the sand dunes that we have in the foreground over here and this kind of yellow. I'm also looking for the roads, this low mountain range and these power lines as well. So let me have a quick look around for those. I don't seem to see those and what I do see are a lot of sand dunes and if we were looking at the mountain range these sand dunes would be quite obvious in the kind of middle to background uh, in between the foreground and the background there. So I'm pretty confident I can rule that one out. I'm actually going to go up to this mountain range which has some dark features which to me means that there might be some pretty heavy and deep lines there. That's a pretty big mountain range. 
it almost makes me think that this might be the kind of mountain range we're after. So let's first of all try and make that shape. This mountain range has some unique shapes. You can see over the top right over here, we've got this kind of chunk coming out and then it goes down gradually slowly. Let's have a look if that applies. This one seems to have a top chunk and then goes down gradually slowly. What we have over here are some unique pieces at the front and then a bit of a mountain in the background. You can see that darker shading in the front here and then the kind of mountains in the background. This is really synonymous with what we're seeing on Google Earth here with these ones in the front and this one in the back. If we move over a bit more to the profile that we have over here, we have a slow rise up here, we have a steady plateau, and we even have like a little path where people may have walked up the top of the mountain, there may be a regular trail or something carved into the side of the mountain like a path or something. So I'm going to make that shape, I'm going to zoom in on an area, I'm pretty convinced that that looks like the slow rise, but then also I'm even more convinced that we can see some sort of a line over here. We can see a kind of zigzag up to the top and then even a line over the front of this mountain. I don't know whether that line might just be the top of the mountain with a little bit of false summit or whether it's actually a, a walking path, but let's have a look. So we can see the mountain close up and don't forget some of these mountains are never perfectly formed. But what we can see is a kind of path that goes up the side here, like a little zigzag. We have that one there. Then we have a little line at the front. And this looks like it might be like a, like a rim, like it's almost like a, like a volcano with a hole in the middle. And there might be a path on there. What we can also see is some jagged bits that go down here. So kind of a bit uh, crevice there and then goes down. And that might actually fit that one too. But again, this could be a false positive. So I'm going to match up some of the other features that we see in this image to try and find and work from our way from the back to the front to see if we can find exactly where this image was taken. So the next thing I want to rule out, uh, just in case I'm getting too focused on this location, is obviously, is there the presence of power lines? If they weren't there, I'd probably say this is fairly indicative of not being the location. So now I'm going to look for power lines. First of all, I can find this one. So maybe there might be a few and you can start to see some power line trails or what might be lines in here uh, on, on the imagery. You can even see shadows of them along this sand here as well. We can trace some of these and actually find the, the locations of these power lines. If I was doing this geolocation and I found it a bit tougher, I'd probably start pinning these power lines and when you identify power lines, it's always nice to pin them on Google Maps because sometimes, especially in desert areas like this, they really stand out quite well and you and are a good reference point for satellite imagery when comparing them with photos or videos on the ground. So we can see that there's a fairly straight line of power lines and that's kind of what we were looking at over here. We can even go into detail to make sure that these are correct power lines by matching up the types that they are. These are three or what I like to call triple tower power lines because they have the three arms. Some of them appear higher or maybe they're not higher, maybe that's a high ridge and that this drip, it dips down a bit. So we can see that there's three arms on these, not exactly on the power line itself, but we can see in the reflection of the power line one, two, three level power line. And we can verify that with some of the others as well, like this one, and this one, and this one. What we can also see is that these power lines actually make a turn. So if you can see this quite well, there's a consistent line of power lines, and then they make a sharp turn. We don't notice a sharp turn over here. This might indicate that what we're seeing is a photo taken from perhaps this location around here where we just see the straight line of power lines and not actually the turn of the power lines. For me, this might indicate something starting to be a bit more of a reference point of where we could find an exact location. What we also have is this kind of yellowing around here with some bushes and then fairly dry kind of crusty sand over here. But again, we don't really see too much of that. And so I'm not too sure if we can exactly identify where that dry crippling patch might begin 
and where the sand and shrub might be as well. But there appears to be some areas around here that have kind of empty areas and then they also have the shrub. What we also see in one of these images are the rocks that we can uh, on the left over here. And there are indications that there seems to be a line of what could be rocks over here or other areas like that as well. It's also worth noting, uh, just for observation points, that in some of these images when you zoom in, there are also some hidden characteristics. When you get familiar with picking up things in images, you can also identify minute details that might indicate a human pattern or a human existence. For example, power lines yet again. We can see a tower there. If that was a thing on its own, I'd rule it out. But we can see a pattern of these even here and here, maybe one there. I can't really see any more, and if I did, I, prob I could be just seeing something in an image. But it's fairly clear that we have at least three or possibly four along here as well. So what we could do is we could actually go from our location that we had and just try and investigate and see if they are present there. I would say that these are power lines and generally power lines are built right next to a road. So I'm going to go to the road over here. I'm going to have a closer look and I can start to see some power lines because of the shadows that they're emitting. So we can see some of these over here, 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 and we can see them all the way along. It seems to be joining up to the road here. And then we have more consistent power lines. So that might explain uh, that that unique kind of little little feature in there. And this is the beauty of geolocation is that once we get to a certain point, we can really start matching up a lot of different things. So now that we have our power lines on here, we can actually just count these ones as well and see that we've got four, possibly uh, one here, which means we might have the, the corner. Uh, but if we don't have the corner, I think these are, are quite kind of stable and, and well sized to be coming closer towards us. And we also have to check out the ground that we're looking at as well. Uh, but with these four power lines, it might be useful to just double check since we know that this image uh, was taken around 2021. At the moment, I'm looking at imagery from 2023. So what I can do is I can actually scroll back in time on Google Earth to May 2021. Yes, the power lines are still there. And we can see that that ground there. And that's actually interesting to look at the ground as well, because if we go back to our image, what we can see is the difference in the in the kind of ground, right? We can see this yellowy type of ground and then this kind of darker, less less uh, grass covered ground with this kind of spin effects or desert type of dry grass and those rocks as well. So it could even be the case that it was around here because we have the build up of that. We don't really see this line anywhere across here. So we could be even looking across here um, and could be witnessing an image from, from this kind of, of angle um, to, to match that. Sometimes it's really useful to make a, uh, a little mountain line just to try and see if we've actually got the exact range and if it matches up that well. And we can see this one's pretty pretty spot on for what we've got. I think the, the mountain range could be a little bit bigger here, but we can see that it matches up quite well, especially some of these grooves and, and ridges uh, and that location with the power lines and everything, even that road over there with the power lines as well. Uh, of course, that might be at a different angle. We also have further matches of these uh, little lines going across here. So we can say with a fairly heavy level of certainty uh, that the location was around this area. Um, I could even draw a box. I'm not too accurate on exactly where uh, this location was, but I could definitely perhaps even draw a kind of indicative box as to where it might have been taken from. And I could really have a good guess to say that this might have been from from around this location. I think that the power lines were, the, the vision of the power lines in front of this were not too 
close. So I'd, I'd keep out the scope of some of those power lines and even go so far as to say that we could be looking at an angle like, like this. And sometimes that's really helpful as a, as a kind of display to at least indicate what you don't know as much as what you do know with that view. So I hope you enjoyed this session on using shadows to help us identify location. And that was using shadows along with other features uh, to identify an accurate as possible location of where this UAV was uh, when it was picked up or identified by militia fighters. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next session.